Hey guys, thanks for coming out. Uh, try to help you out with whatever I can. Greg, do you have any updates on the injured guys? Aaron, Bo, Raekwon, Izian, and I think Tyreek Max Williams didn't play on Saturday. I don't think we asked you about him then. Mm -hmm. uh, why don't you go one by one me so I don't lose track here? Bo. Yeah, we'll he'll be. We'll see how he comes along during the week. Uh, same thing. Raekwon. Same thing. Izian. He's fine. And uh, Noah, he's fine as well. He'll be okay. Yep. And uh, Maddox Williams. We're gonna have to wait and see on him too. I guess just after reviewing the tape, I mean, what did you see from the offense the other day, and how did you kind of want to get that next step to where you're hitting those plays that you, you know, you guys want to make? Well, definitely looking forward, right? That's that's number one. I'm not going to look back. Uh, we study the tape. We have opportunities on film that we have to cash in on, and if we do that, um, we're going to score points. And if we don't, we won't. It's really not more complicated than that. And it's not just you know the easy ones or the deep balls that you miss by it. But there's some runs that if we get one block done correctly, you know, it's going to be one on one with a safety. And that's what you ask for, right? You get to 12, 13 yards deep in the secondary, one on one with a safety, see what happens. So there's plenty of plays out there that, you know, we're not that far off. But that's coach speak. You, know, you got you to get the job done. We got to coach better, we got to play better, and that's what we're going to try to do. Greg, to that end, uh, the rushing attack. Um, what needs to be how do you become more productive in that area well, just what I said you know finishing on blocks running the ball reading it correctly all everything there's not one issue um, and then you know again let's I always got to say this let's tip our hat to Michigan State you know they have a big solid front four that was very physical and they out physical us at times with the backup quarterback, obviously, you know, was healthy. But if you had to go to, you know, either Cole or Evan, how comfortable are you six games in with their progression in, in terms of development? I'm comfortable. I won't tell you who it would be or how much or, you know, how we distribute it. But I'm comfortable with both of them. You know, they've done, they've done a very good job in their preparation. They've both improved considerably. And, um, you know, I think we'll continue to do that. They're hardworking guys. What have you seen from Aaron Lewis and, and the way he's played, given his opportunities and, and kind of where he is in his development? I think Aaron Lewis is a player that's really matured. Um, he's playing at a, at a much higher level than he was as a true freshman, which we expected. Uh, he's bigger, he's stronger, he's faster, he's a better football player today than he was any time last year. We need him to continue to grow because he has the growth potential, number one, physically, and he's really athletic for a big, rangy guy. And uh, he's been very productive. So, you know, he and Mike have literally split the split the reps there. And, uh, you know, that's the way we like to do it. We want to play a lot of people up front. That's a all-day-long wrestling match, right? And you know how tiring that gets. So um, I like the fact that we have the ability to play several people in the front four. Greg, getting back to Bobby's question, we've seen Cole, I think, four or five games now. I know it's been games that are out of hand, but he always seems to move the offense, produce. When you get have a backup quarter like that, at some point, do you have to find a way to get him on the field against a first team defense just to see what he can do? Only if your quarterback, only if you're not pleased with what your quarterback's doing. Yeah, not just to do it. No, I don't think. Um, I think Noah's done a really good job leading our football team and leading our offense. Um, I don't think if I thought someone could do it better, they'd be doing it. So no, I don't. I don't just do it to do it. Talked about so many younger guys get more time. Saw so Keontae Hamilton get in there. What are your thoughts on his progression and, and just him overall, how he's developed? Keontae is a winner, right? He's a very gifted athlete. He is confident in his abilities. So he's helped us in the special teams throughout the season. He's getting more reps on defense now and will continue to do so. Um, I think he's a gifted football player. He just, you know, he's only going to get better and better and bigger and bigger and stronger and stronger. So uh, I think his wrestling background really helps him too, playing at that tilt nose, understanding leverage, uh, quick hands, all those things. Greg, any thoughts on why this team has been so uh, good on the road, 4-2 and two, dating back to last year? I know last year was without fans, but yet the Syracuse game was a win and played well against Michigan. Any thoughts on why you've been able to buckle down and, and be as successful on the road? You know, we've talked about that a little, Keith. I, look, we ha I think we have a really good road routine. 
Um, but I also think we have a good home routine. So um, maybe I need to examine our home routine in, in relation to our road routine. But um, I think it might just be chance right now. If it gets to continue on and become a reoccurring theme more than it has, then I, I really have to examine it. But I look at everything. I mean, I, I, I study everything. And, um, you know, the only thing that you might say is there's only 74 players and that's it. So there's not any other. But I like the energy our players bring on the sideline. You know, we have our guys that are dressed. We have our guys that are not, that are in sweats. They bring incredible energy. Um, we miss that on the road. It really, you really got to rely on everybody to, to come together. And who knows, maybe that galvanizing factor is something to look at. You know, we've talked about it for sure, though. So it's a valid question. What are the primary challenges facing this Northwestern team? They're a really well-coached football team. They're kind of finding their way at quarterback right now. They, several guys have played. We're not sure who's going to play. Um, I think what you know is that they've had this week to look back at what they've done. And Pat Fitzgerald is a, is a real good friend of mine, and he's one of the best coaches in America. So he and his staff, I know the way he works, they will have unpeeled that onion 15 times to figure out, okay, this is what we've done well, this is what we haven't. Let's look at what Rutgers has done well and what they haven't. How do we take advantage of it? How do we stop what they do well? You know, that's, that's the approach. In, in, like I said to our team, in many ways, we're playing ourselves this week. And um, we need to really be a better version of us. That's all we can, can control. Greg, I know Pat said that at Media Days, too. Like, where did you guys kind of meet along the way and become friends? And do you look at Northwestern as maybe a, not a perfect blueprint of what could be done here? School with great academics, near a big city, not a lot of tr success in the Big Ten prior. And now they've you know won ten games a couple times, won a couple division titles. Yeah, well, first off, it's a tribute to Pat, right? I mean, he's done an incredible job. If you remember, the tragedy that led to Pat getting the head job was Coach Walker passing away, and I can remember, um, you know, Pat and I were represented by the same guy early on, and and we visited together some at the beginning of his tenure as a head coach, and I was so impressed. Really, like I said, this guy is a star. And sure enough, he's been every bit and then some, right? Um, Pat's turned down multiple opportunities to coach in the NFL. I mean, if there's a right guy for Northwestern, he's the guy. And um, he's done an incredible job. And all they've done is continue to build. Like, that's a great model for us to follow as far as building. When you, If you get a chance when you're out there, go look at their new football building. It's incredible. It sits right there on the lake. I mean, really, really special. Now... Uh, what's going to happen with their stadium, right? I mean, Pat has built Northwestern into a year-in and year-out legitimate contender in the Big Ten. And um, so to answer your question, sure is something that we'd like to, to pattern ourselves after. Now, we're a public research institution. They're a private, very good school, obviously, but uh, there's some differences. But when it comes to football and growing a program, yeah, I think they've, they've kind of laid a, a blueprint um, we actually had Big Ten Media Day about uh, your facility, and you uh, kind of hinted that it could be unveiled sometime this fall uh, to piggyback off the Northwestern football facility. Any chance that we'll see blueprints or you know any plans uh, before the end of the season? There's a chance. You know, when I get into the season, Keith, the reality is I don't get allow myself to be distracted by many things. There's other people that are working on it, though. It doesn't go to bed for four months. Um, so, and occasionally I dip into that. So we'll see. I don't know if the time is right yet. Uh, Shamin had 17 targets on Saturday. I think he had 15 in the first five games. I know some of that's his bow and arrow not being available, but how comforting is it that you have a guy like him that can step up and be a number one receiver even with those guys out? Yeah, it's, it's really important. you know. And again, we may be really challenged. We'll see. And I'm not coach speaking. I don't know if they're going to be able to play. I know this. If they can, they will. Because those two are warriors, right? AC and uh, and Bo are war. They want to play desperately. So we'll see if they heal up, right? Uh, they're doing everything that you can, treatment wise, and we have the best training staff in America, and the doctors I think are unbelievable. So they're doing. We're doing everything we can. Um, we just got to see if it works in time for the game, you know. Guys, I appreciate it again always that uh, the the coverage you give us. It it really is helping grow our program. So thanks.